But thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one thing Jesus wants to give you is victory in every area of your life. Something good, something good, something good. Welcome to World Harvest Church! Welcome to World Harvest Church! Bienvenidos a Iglesia World Harvest! Welcome to World Harvest Church. Come on, are you excited to be in revival? As Pastor said, this is the last official, unofficial revival. Aren't you excited? Come on, just shake some things off. We come tonight to just honor God, to reverence God, how he brought us from January all the way through December. If you're hearing this, you still have activity in your body, you are alive and well, you are breathing in H2 or oxygen, you can make some Holy Ghost noise in this place. Hallelujah! The devil may have tried to take you out, but God said no. The devil may have tried to interrupt how you started the year, but we are going to finish strong in Jesus' name. We started the year worshiping, we're going to end the year worshiping. Lifting up the name of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, who has all power in the palm of his hand. Your life is because he loves you. You're alive. You're alive. You're alive. Look at your neighbor and say, you're alive. So make some Holy Ghost noise. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and let's worship him tonight. Father, you are omnipotent. You are gracious. You are mighty. You are wonderful. You are
Come on, don't stop clapping. Come on.
You know, when you are a prisoner, sometimes you got some shackles held on you where you can't move at all. I don't know about you, but some court shows I watch, when they bring the prisoners in, their hands are shackled, their feet are shackled, and they move like this. But guess what? The prison doors of bondage have been opened up for you. All the shackles have come off for you. There's nothing holding your feet from moving. There's nothing keeping your hands from waving. There's nothing from stopping you from running.
neighbor and just simply be as polite as you can and say, excuse me, while I get my praise on. And if you don't want to get your praise on, then I will gladly take your blessing with me. Come on, come on. If you got some stiff people in your aisle, sometimes it just takes locking up with them to get them moving. Come on, we ought to fill these aisles up. We ought to fill this altar up. Today is an act to let the enemy know that you didn't win in 2020. You didn't destroy me in 2020. The thing that you tried to crush me with only made me better. It only made me stronger. It only made me wiser. There's a Holy Ghost in this room. There's a Holy Ghost.
gonna cry in this place. And I want the enemy to hear me. You ready? Just listen. Oh. loves you so much that he's not going to leave you right where you are. We serve a God who wants nothing but the best for you. Your best days are coming, but it's going to begin with your praise. It's going to begin with your praise of gratitude. God, thank you for the process. Thank you for what I've gone through. 
Thank you for what I've gone through. For you've made me a better person, God. God, when my friends turn their backs on me, you made me a better person. When people lied on me, you made me a better person. When they came after me, God, you made me a better person. When I lost my job, you made me a better person. When I went through sickness, you made me a better person. When they accused me falsely, you made me a better person. Come on all over the sanctuary, just lift your hands. God not only loves me in the natural, but he is a lover of my soul. He is a lover of your soul. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, as you lift your hands, just close your eyes. And just pretend that you're standing in the presence of God. Their human bones are as fragile as mine. I have my flaws but they have the same kind. I was ashamed, cause I couldn't see. But grace says that they're in the same boat as me. But what I lack, you are full of. And where I'm broken, you are whole. And when I'm doubting, <laughs> you are sure of, I'll trust the lover, lover of my soul. I'm not afraid of the arrows by day, nor the darkness that comes when the sun rolls away. Lord, you know that. My strength never fails. You make up for every weakness I have. But what I lack, you are full of. Where I'm broken, where I'm broken, you are. You are. And when I'm doubting, when I'm doubting, you are sure. You are sure. I trust the lover. Aren't you glad he loves you? I'm just declaring this. I'm not afraid 
up the arrows by day, nor the darkness that comes my way. Lord, you know that my strength cannot last. You know every weakness I have. But what I Trust the lover of your soul. 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 I'll trust the lover, lover of my soul. I'll trust the lover, lover.
tonight. He's your way maker.
Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh yes, Lord, one more time. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are, Lord. That is who you that is who you are 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 John the Revelator said, I saw him. His eyes were like fire. His hair was white as wool. His clothes were so bright. They were brighter than the sunshine at noontime. His feet were as burnished bronze. And his voice sounded like the voice of many waters. Then John saw Jesus riding on a white stallion. On his nameplate was faithful and true. We serve a glorious Savior. We serve an all-conquering King who broke the back of the devil in hell. Hallelujah. 
And he rose again triumphant in these days. He gives us the keys of all authority over all evil powers of hell. And so we stand with our righteous King and Lord. We stand clothed with a righteous robe. We stand inhabited by the precious Holy Spirit. We stand with our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We stand with angels encamped round about us. We stand with the blood of Christ washing over us. We stand with the Word of God that's alive and full of power. We stand with the armor of God upon our life and with the sword of the Spirit. And we wield the shield of faith and we quench every work of hell that sails against us. And we truly are made more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Thanks be to God that always causes us to triumph through Christ Jesus. We truly have been made more than conquerors through Him that loved us. And the greater one, the greater one, the greater one, the greater one lives within us. Hallelujah. Jesus said, fear not, only believe. In these troubled times, fear not what man shall do to you. For I am with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We don't have to fear any man. We don't have to fear any edicts of man. We don't have to fear any devils. We walk in triumph in Jesus Christ. We walk in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And the devils are under our feet. According to Luke 10, 19. We have power to tell him to go from our life. To go from our families. We have the power over him. And the precious truth of the Word of God sets us free. The news media will bring, I'm telling you what, social media, news media, all the other streams of information that are full of the spirit of Antichrist. I'm telling you, the Word of God will break all the lies. The Word of God will set you free to have the joy of the Lord in the midst of all the stress. That we don't have a care, we cast every care upon God. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, we thank you, Holy Ghost, that you abide in us. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we love you, our Savior and our Lord. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we love you. Our Savior and our Lord. Yela mama no, yela nana ma, yela nana mu, zolo zu jiri. Yela nana ma, yelo lo lo lo, yela mama re ziri. Oh Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we love you. Oh mighty God and King. Oh, we worship you and we praise you. Yes, we love you. Oh our God and King. He Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, our God and King. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we praise you. We give you glory. 
Oh, our God and King. Oh, dio, oh, dio, oh, dio, oh, dio. Ela na ma gereala, yo lo dozo gerereu. Iri ele ele deu, oriolo jolo. Eli ela geleala, oh 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 Jesus, we worship you. We give our hearts to you. We give our lives into your hands. You bought us, Jesus, with your precious blood. We belong to you. We belong to you. You're our Savior and our King, our Redeemer, who delivered us from every work of hell. You are the one true conqueror, reigning gl gloriously. Oh God, we give you all the praise. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. We love you, oh God, we love you, we love you, we love you. How good you are, how kind you are, how gracious, oh God, to us, oh Lord. Oh, we love you and we praise you, oh, 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 You say, what are you doing? We're waiting on the Lord. We're just waiting to worship Him and to praise Him. Hallelujah. Oh, the glory of His presence. Oh, the glory of His presence. He'll catch up. Dariala babariala, hajela bariala babara dariala daya olo soya. Oh, the glory. Oh, the 
the glory of your presence of your presence we your people we your temple your temple give you reverence so by our praise as we glory in your embrace as your presence now fills this Father, we come before the great throne of God. We serve a holy and mighty God. You reign in majesty. The light of your glory is too bright for even man to approach. But God, we worship you tonight. And Father, we lift up the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior and our Deliverer. And Lord, let not one person be changed even tonight as we've worshipped you before your throne. Let the power of God undo every weight and every burden of sin. Let your light shine and undo all the deception and the lies the enemy has trapped us in. Let there be a breakout and a breakthrough in every life. That you would touch and heal every broken heart. That you would set every captive free tonight by the mighty power of God. That Lord we expect it. We expect December to be a month of release. Of all bondage. A month of miracle power. A month of divine restoration. A month of the anointing of God to destroy every work of hell. For the anointing destroys every yoke and lifts every burden. That Jesus, we come to meet with you and you're here in this place. And we believe for the miracle power of God. That you will do the work even as we've lifted you up in this place. Almighty God and King, we're nothing, you're everything. We're only anything through you, Jesus. We magnify you. We praise you. Everybody said amen. amen. Everybody said glory to God. Glory to God. Everybody say thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. What a mighty move today. I want to give the praise to God. I thank God for our singers who just, just did so well to flow in the Holy Ghost. And just, it was just a powerful, 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 powerful. Hallelujah. Well, we're trying to make this the last night of revival. I don't know about that. I gave a caveat that may not be. Hallelujah. Man, isn't Jesus wonderful? Isn't Jesus wonderful? Be seated if you can. I got Pastor Willie coming up here. you know, as we were worshiping God, it's an opportunity to give. You know, every time we come into the house of the Lord, there's an opportunity that it all goes sailing to be sick. And the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, you know, this is like a, a John chapter 5 moment. While people were sitting with needs, they were sitting, waiting, 
struggling, going through issues, needing a healing. God spoke to my heart. He said, the waters are stirred. He said, you're sitting by the side of the pool, but the waters are stirred. And tonight as you give, you're stepping in. You're stepping into that pool. And therein lies your healing. Therein lies your breakthrough. As you give tonight, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, that thing which you have so desired, the waters are stirred tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, the waters are stirred tonight as you give because of your praise. As you give tonight, the waters are stirred. And I will heal, I will deliver, I will set free. As you give tonight, as you give tonight, see yourself stepping over. The angel has stirred the waters. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. There's a breakthrough in the house. There's a breakthrough in the house. You got to catch this in the spirit. There's a breakthrough in the house. The waters are stirred and almost said, Tonight when you give, you got to know that God is doing something supernatural. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty even in your giving. God's going to do it tonight. I want you to get your seed and believe that that need that you have in your life while you were sitting on the side of the pool of Bethesda, that need that you have in your life tonight in the name of Jesus. God said tonight when you give that seed, you're stepping in the water. Hallelujah. And the power of God is going to meet you right where you're at. Hold it almost sick, hit it almost. So this is a holy time. You're in the presence of an almighty God. Caught it almost saying, Calamity. It's all right to linger, but I never see Kira Wosu. TC BC combo did it all This is our time of worship, God. We worship you, Jesus. You're stepping into a holy place, an opportunity. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. God knew that you would be here. God knew that the waters would be stirred tonight. God saw you when you didn't even see yourself. God saw you. God knows that you have a need. And tonight, the angels have stirred the waters because of your praise. He stirred the waters because of your praise tonight. Hallelujah. So tonight as you give, expect a miracle. Expect a miracle. Expect a miracle tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
Come on, saints. It's okay to worship God. It's okay to worship God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Supernatural overflow tonight, God. Supernatural overflow tonight, God. Every need met, God. Lord, as the waters are stirred, God, we believe that you're healing, oh God. That you're delivering, oh God. That you're multiplying seed, oh God. Lord, that you're doing a supernatural work tonight, God. We believe, oh God, that tonight is our night of miracle, oh God. That tonight is our night of divine delivery, oh God. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, God, we sow our seed. We believe, oh God, we're expecting a miracle, God. We're expecting a miracle, God. Do a work tonight, God. Do a work, oh God. Do a work, We're still waiting on you. Tonight could be your last night to give. Tonight could be the night that you need your breakthrough. You need to push it through tonight in the name of Jesus. Your miracle is waiting tonight. Your miracle is waiting tonight. Your miracle is waiting tonight. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Pastor Willie, for your sensitivity in the Holy Ghost. When I was preparing today, the Lord said, expect the supernatural tonight. God will do supernatural things. We don't know the state of every person, but there are people here with real needs. Some people, they don't have to, they have to have a miracle. And I just know God's going to provide it. Tonight is the night. The healing of hearts, healing of physical bodies. Some of your loved ones need a healing. In Jesus' name. Montanique, your daughter's going to receive healing. She's going to walk. She's going to receive I know that the supernatural miracles are going to be start popping. I just feel it in my heart. It's going to happen. It's become a regular thing. God's presence is so, you know, once you tap in that taste of the heavenly realm, nothing else matters. Neither do you care. Because when you're over there, it's a taste of heaven. When you go to heaven, it'll be like this, just stronger. But we're tasting heaven. And that's right around the corner for us. We're, the, we're so blessed. We're the blessed people of God. It's just amazing. So I want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I don't want uh, when I prepare these for the revival, I study scripture, put maybe some notes, outlines. I study, I see God, I pray, but then I could flow with the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
But I sense it's going to be shorter tonight because we're going to minister to people tonight. There's going to be a lot of ministry to people. God's going to do works in the hearts of people. Man, I just, he is so strong here. Jesus is here like a mighty heavy blanket. And I want to be careful. I don't disturb anything he, he wants to have happen because it's not about any person. It's about the Holy Ghost doing what the Holy Ghost wants to do because he's the one that affects the change. Amen. But I felt like about a week or so ago, the Lord gave me the word for tonight. And uh, it's the way we need to live our life. It's really the normal way to live your life. You say, well, what are we talking about? I'm talking about a relentless pursuit of God. I just heard this, pursue me. Pursue me. A relentless pursuit of me. No matter what happens in your life, no matter what people say, all the barriers that get thrown up, whether your job issues or relatives or it's just that, no, I don't care what anybody else, I'm going to pursue him. Are you out there? We have examples of people that pursue God. We start off with Enoch. He's one of my favorite pursuers of God. I think about it. I thought about it. God, what made Enoch... He said he was 65 years of age before he had his first child. And then he said, Enoch walked with God. Hebrews 11 says in verse 5 that Enoch walked with God. He had this testimony that he pleased God. He pursued God for 300 years. Think about that. For 300 years. I said, God, what is it about me? He said, it has to be desire. A holy desire that burns in your heart. And it's a twofold thing. We reach out to God, but the more you reach out to God, God will reach out to you. Your hunger for God can grow. Your desire for God can grow. Enoch pursued God relentlessly to the point that he got so caught up in the glory that God took him. There's no gravestone in the earth that says, here lies Enoch. The only thing is the stone that says, here's, I think is where he left. Is jumping up point. Then we see another great man of God, Moses. Moses pursued God. I love Moses. I love to read about, you know, we see about his prophetic work and all that he did to lead the children of Israel. But you look at the core. 40 days and 40 nights twice in the mountain of God. He built a tent for himself outside the camp just so he could meet with God. God told Miriam and Aaron, when you criticize Moses, he says, no one on the planet meets with me like Moses. He meets with me face to face. And we hear this cry where Moses, after he's had all this time, he said, God, show me your glory. I want to see your power, your glory. Here's a man that pursued God. These are champions. What made their mark in history was their pursuit of God. And then we have another champion. His name was David. King David was one that pursued God. You can look at scripture. I've got scriptures. Where it says in Psalm 63, 8. Now listen to these words. My soul follows close behind you. I love what the King James says, my soul follows hard after you. Like he's pushing the pedal to the metal. He's saying, God, I've got to know you better. 
He says, oh God, you are my God. Hear this cry. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. You talk about spiritual things. That things get so dry. When we came to the fullness of the Holy Ghost, the presence of God showed up. As a young man, I was 18. It was like I came out of God's chosen frozen. And, I, and I'd never, and I would experience, every now and again, out of a touch of God. I was in a church downtown. I won't mention the name, but they're in the corner of North Avenue and Peachtree. <laughs> and I was baptized with a font. I came up, it's a big church, in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost. We don't do that anymore. We put you under the water, and we hold you under there until the bubbles quit coming out. Then you know you're really identified with Christ, and we jerk you out. But I remember when they prayed, God, the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost came on. I didn't know what it was. It's like a presence came on me. Like it began to like just get moved. I, what, what is it? Just stayed with me. As a young man, I got filled with the Spirit of God and I hung around other young men. That's going to happen in the young. It's not religion. It's just that we used to hang together just to worship God. And it grew and grew and grew and grew. What drew us was the presence. The presence of God. And so when you meet people like Norval Hayes, I follow him because he had a great presence of God upon him. Like Norval was not like your regular cut mold preacher. And when Brother Rodney came around, someone told me about him. Have you heard? I said, what? The presence of God. Where? As they say down south, where at? Terrible English, but we get the idea. I said, in Orlando, Florida, Carpenter's Home Church. Are you kidding? He said, no, he went 63, ran eight weeks. Like 5,000 people came to Christ. I said, dear God, i got to get there. And when I walked in there the very first night, I sat down, and here comes the presence. 10,000 people. I said, ah, this is it. And he began to speak on the fact that church has lost its way. The church in America has lost its way. We're into programs. You get a five-star if you're a highly managerial administrator. You know how to administer, administrate churches. And I'm a great uh, follower of Brother Hagin. I'd be in his meetings. He was a man of the spirit. I've been in those meetings where God would show up. He couldn't move a finger or a toe. I've been in those meetings where he's preaching on the signs, wonders, and miracles and the power of God. I've been in those meetings. And in the middle of his preaching, all of a sudden, his feet go six feet in the air. He goes horizontal and the ghost drops to the ground and no one moved a muscle or a toe. We sat there for 30, 40 minutes, 10,000 people. The presence of God through the whole place. <clears throat> and finally they said, you know what? We don't know what the prophet happened to the prophet, but God obviously took him somewhere. You all get to go home. I remember I sat there, one of the last to leave. I was just sat there staring at him. That's a man that's touching God. He knows how to touch God. David had this cry for God. We've got to cultivate this desire. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, it says, earnestly desire the gifts of the Spirit. He, he, he tells you the key ingredient to flowing in the gifts is your desire. Is your desire. So it tells me, I've got to grow my desire. I've got to grow my hunger for God. It's got to grow. And he goes on to say, Psalmist David, Psalm 42, 1. Let me finish up Psalm 63, verse 2. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Folks, when this 
when the glory of God's here, like it is tonight, God's going to do things tonight. God's already doing things. I, you can't limit the Holy Ghost. He can be doing things right now as we're speaking, right in the worship. You're not going to limit God. He'll do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. But you can't pay money for this. This is what it's about. It's about his presence and about God. That's what it boils down to. He said, do I have to go to church? Well, if it's a dry church, I don't want to go. But if there's churches where the Spirit of God is, I want to be there. Because the very night you miss it, the very one like this, where God's going to show up and do supernatural things. Wow. Psalm 42, 1. As the deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Say that, my soul thirst for God. Tell God, say, God, I'm thirsty for you. I'm hungry for you. As the deer pants after the water book, what does that word pant mean? It's like you long. He longed for the presence of God. He longed to get over there. When shall I come and appear before God? So we've got to understand this, that these men led the way. This is what God said, David's a man after my heart because he pursues me. He pursues me. I believe God's going to put a hunger in this house to pursue God. Because everything you ever do for God comes out of that heart of being touched by his power. When you're touched by his power, you're touched by his love, you cannot do enough for him. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? When you get touched, it's like, it's okay, God, I want to work for you. I don't care what I want to do, I have to do something significant. I'll fly to South Africa, I'll raise money. But it's because you're touched. When God touches you with his love and his presence, you can't ever be the same. But the deal is this. God wants to touch us again and again and again. He wants you to have that pursuit of him where that fire begins to build in you and that presence begins to grow in you. And there's this pulling of the deep unto deep. It's like God's calling you, but you're going to pull to him. But the man I want to talk about is one other man listed in the Bible that was a great model of pursuing God. His name is Paul. Paul was just, he got it. I'm telling you what, of all the things he did, he said, let me tell you what drives me. And I want to leave, read this, and then we'll just let the Lord minister. But I love the Amplified. I'm going to go to Philippians 3. I have it right here. Paul's pursuit of God. This is in the Amplified. Yes, furthermore, verse 8. I count everything as lost compared to the possession of the priceless privilege, the overwhelming, precious possession, a precious, the surpassing worth and supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. And of progressively, progressively becoming more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. Of perceiving and recognizing and understanding him more fully and clearly. For his sake I have lost everything and consider it all to be mere rubbish. They kind of cleaned it up. It does say dung. And dung, there's two types of dung. I'll just be real honest. You don't mind me being honest to you. It's either human excrement or leftover food from dinner. Either way, Paul says, I count everything that I've ever attained outside of Christ as mere 
trash. In order that I may win or gain Christ, the anointed one. I'll read a few of more scriptures here, but the whole passage of Philippians 3 is a cry of Paul to know God. God is a personal God. We are people. And we can have a relationship with a personal God, a personal Jesus. And the reality of that is requiring us to be in a place always asking for moves of God and living in revival. Because if you don't live pursuing the things of God, if you don't pursue relentlessly, it's like you've got to make up your mind, I am going to pursue God. In my own personal time, I'm going to pursue God. I'm going to pursue. I don't care. And a lot of people try to dissuade you. Well, aren't you a little radical? You're going to another conference. Uh, you're, you're still in revival. You still have revivals? I don't say it. I want to say it. You mean you don't? Because I'm very aware that I need constant stripping, and so do you, of the things that get around us and put that fire out. It's very real and very seductive. And what happens to our lives, we become self-righteous, we're self-fulfilled. We have the answers when really we don't. And we become self-deceived. Amen. And Paul talks about this out of Ephesians 5.14. He talks about, wake up you who are sleeping. Arise from the dead. He's talking to spiritual Christians. I believe most of the church is sleeping. Seriously, it's just, we don't get it about the commission. We don't get it about the anointing. We don't get it about the, the, the fact that we're supposed to pursue God. You're considered like kind of out of the mainstream. Wake up. That's what he says, wake up. It's amazing when people are asleep, isn't it? You go unconscious. You're oblivious of what's going around you. Isn't it true? People are asleep. Paul said the church is sleeping. He says, wake up! You're asleep. We've got to be at this place where Paul is to say, God, Paul goes on to say that what I'm going to teach you, this is the normal Christian life that you must develop a relentless pursuit for God. And you can grow your hunger. He said, what are you going to do? I want to pray that God will make you hungry to pursue him. If that's anything that happens tonight, that God will touch you and make you more hungry than you came in. Let's keep reading in the loud version, the Amplified. In verse 9, that I may justly be found or actually be found and known as in him not having my self-achieved righteousness that can be called my own based on my obedience to the Lord's demands ritualistic uprighteousness and supposed right standing with God that's thus acquired but possessing that genuine righteousness which comes through faith in Christ the anointed one the truly right standing with God which comes from God by Saving faith. The fact that we're made righteous and right standing with God gives us opportunity to press into God. There's no barriers between us and God. He makes us right standing with Him. But let's go to verse 10. This is so powerful. For my determined purpose. Everybody say determined purpose. I love those words. My determined purpose is that I may know Him and that I may be progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. Now stop right here. Let me tell you what, what religion does. Religion, because we hear a verse and we hear a song, even in the worship, and everything about the church, we slip into what I call rote, R-O-T-E. 
rote, when something is rote, you can say something without even understanding what it says. You just, maybe something memorized, you just say it and that's what it is. You can say, praise the Lord. You can say, hallelujah. You can say things that sound really good, but really it's not from the heart. It's disconnected. And we get in a rut. Because you get on the road, you get in a rut. And what happens is, we don't just, well, we just go through the motions and we don't really expect that much. Well, God, maybe somehow, but we slip into this doldrum of just going through the motions in church, going through the motions in our personal life with God. And we have got to recognize that we must have a continued revival to break us out of the ruts that we find ourselves in. How many know that you can get in a rut so easy? It is, I'm constantly having to re-examine my life. In fact, right now I feel like I need to get away for a while. I just feel, you just get because of life speed and the things that happen. It's like you need to slow down. I told someone they were struggling with their decisions in their life. You know what I so you know what I do? I just get away for two or three days, lock myself in a room, and no one talks to me. Just God. That for me, I have to do a reset. Does that make sense? You look, look at Charles Finney's life. You know, the greatest revivals. They say he's the greatest revivals America's ever produced. Uh, but you've got to be brutally honest with your life. You've got to give, the Bible says, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. You've got to be brutally honest. Quit giving ourselves self excuses. But he said, I knew when I was slipping. I could tell it. I was slipping. I just didn't have that fire. I didn't have that pizzazz. I didn't have that hunger. It was like I was slipping. He says, whenever I found myself slipping, I stop what I'm doing. I go on a three-day fast and do nothing but seek God for three days. I fast, seek God, and shut everything off and go for what God's trying to do. And I get a reset on the inside of me. And then I catch the fire, and then I go again. I love Chris's testimony. I watched her, you know, we did, this is like a 55th meeting. She's been almost every one of them. I watch her time after time. What happens, you keep coming. Your head says, I can do better things. I'm hearing the same thing over. But no, it can be a fresh word when the Holy Ghost gets you. And what happens, people that keep coming, they keep coming, they keep coming, they keep coming. It's like they're being turned. They don't even know what's happening. But they're having things shaved off them. And a hunger poured into them. They're being turned. It's imperceptible. You ever watch a tree grow? I don't see anything changing. But it's that subtle. The Holy Ghost. You see, human pride, I know that. I already got that. But your hunger will say, you know, mine, shut up. I don't know God like I can know him. Part of the pursuit is how you pursue even a meeting. It's how you show up in God's presence. Part of the pursuit is how you come to church. You can come religiously. You can sit there like a bump on a log. Your mind's out to lunch. You're thinking about a million things, always checking the watch. It always amazes me. People come to church to look out the window. And look at their watches. You know, you know what's so discouraging as a pastor? You pray, you fast, you get out there, you're preaching your heart out, and someone's out there in the middle <laughs> catching flies. <laughs> I've seen just 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 catching flies. That's why I had to have fireworks. <laughs> because when I go boom! Everybody lifts up, everybody's awake. What happened? I'm, excuse me, I'm preaching. <laughs> but people will come and they're not engaged. You know why? They're not that hungry. But at least they're hungry enough to come to church. Then you got the ones that are out there that don't come to church. I'm excluding the, 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 the whole deal. If you're watching because of safety, we give you a pass. I understand. I'm not going to get there. I used to in the early days. I was bad. I really got into it. Looking back at some of the things I said, dear God, it's wonder anybody's tuned in. <laughs> but uh, my wife kept telling me, don't say those things. 
people are watching. And you know, when I, you know, I'll say things that I think people have left the church disconnected, not watching. And my son said, all those people left the church that don't like you, they're all watching. <laughs> I said, you don't say. Amazing. I mean, I'm amazed. We love you. Forgive me for all the things I said about dust balls, dead cockroaches, and living under the sofa. But I just, I don't, I don't say those things anymore. I used to say those things. But my point is, it's your hunger for God. It's your hunger for God. Now listen, that's why I believe in front rows. My own life, I've always go to the front row in everything. I just go to the front row. I just like to go there. Excuse me, excuse me. Like if I'm a little bit late, there's a big room, I will go to the front. And invariably, there's a seat right there in the front. That some guy's got his, some, something, he's like his satchel there or something. Excuse me, that's my seat. I have just been that way because I want to not miss a thing. It's like I'm making my flesh pay attention. Amen? And so you've got to judge yourself. You've got to judge yourself. I've got to judge myself. and I'm, I want to say I'm a... a, a Renee knows this. I'd always say I need to spend more time with God as a pastor because we do a lot and I'm in the middle of it I'm in the middle <laughs> stuff's flying I'm not one of these detached pastors I like to you could, you could, you can do it but you know I want to always inspect what you what I'm expecting my staff know that they, we have reports what's happening but God got a hold of me this year he said, you need to spend more time with me. So I do. I don't come till Tuesday till 11, Wednesday till later, Thursday till 11. I used to be here, man, 8, 30, 9, work till 7, 30, 8, go home. I get my prayer in between, do all that stuff. But God said, no, spend more with me. Spend more with me. And it's impacting my life. So what he does for me, he's going to do that for you in these last days. There's going to be a pull by the Holy Spirit. Pursue me relentlessly. Watch out for the roads that turn into ruts. Watch out for you just going. I used to watch these ladies. I said, I'll never be that way. When we first came with Assemblies of God Church, and it was an old line Pentecostal church, I remember the whole front was filled with mostly women with beehive hair to do. They were the typical Pentecostal women. They were Pentecostal, but they would all do this. If any of the preacher ever said, they go, they'd only use one hand, never that high. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It would just bug me. I said, if you're going to raise your hand, raise the hands. I will never just go praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we're dancing before the Lord, I want to try out dance you. I want to do everything like all the way. Does that make sense? I'm not going to get in this facade. If we're going to give, I'm going to give to blessed be God. How much can I give? I don't, I want to be, because because it's the pursuit of God. You've got to get out of comfort. Get out of, of, of that lazy, sleepy mode that this, like this sleep thing wants to get a hold of you. Come on. You can do this with comfort. You don't need to strain and reach. You don't need to stretch. Just relax. Let the Holy Ghost just give you a lullaby. <laughs> lullaby. And we just go to sleep. Most Christians are asleep. I hate to say it. You know what revival's for? Who can I do it? That's fair. You. You won't mind. <laughs> Wake up in Jesus' name. That's what revival's about. <laughs> Wake up. If you've ever been traveling and preaching different churches, Pastor Willie, I'm sure you've had experience. You're out there. You're preaching your heart out. I was in Germany. Charismatic church. Here's, here's the stance of everybody. 
expressionless. I'm preaching on heaven and the glory of heaven. I said, get me out of here. Some people, their churches are so dead. They're so dead. That, that, that 911, there's a 911 call that someone had a heart attack in the back row. And they emptied out half the church before they found the guy. Because there was so much dead wood in that place. Let me, let's just go on. For my determined purpose. It was a determined purpose. That I may know him. That's got to be your determined purpose. I want to know him. I don't want to be, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. And then we just check out. That's not the purpose of what you're called to. You're called to pursue him. A relentless pursuit. That I may progressively become more deeply, intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. Let me just talk about Jesus. Of all the people you could ever know on earth, you need to develop a fascination for Jesus. A fascination. There is a sin of complacency. Yeah, I know Jesus. Even you saying that says, no, you don't. He's a real person. We quoted what Revelation says about him. Colossians 1 says that by him and through him everything was made. He created everything you know and see. He created you. There's no one like him. I'm fascinated. This man that came to this earth worked with wood as a carpenter's son. This man who constantly said, that's not my, my will, it's coming to do my father's will. This man who, when they came for him, Peter cut, that temp cut the temple guard's ear off. Peter, put the ear back on. When they said, are you the Christ? He said, I am he. He. Power emanated from him so powerfully the entire regiment fell flat to the ground. He said, Peter, take a chill pill. In a moment, I could have 12 legions of angels like that. It's Jesus. So incredibly powerful. So filled with glory. So incredibly majestic. And yet, no one is as humble as he. There's a fascination about Jesus. And he says, the more you know me, the more my life will be in you. You see, we get so distracted. That's why people, they get degrees sometimes in theology. They get a PhD in theology. I sometimes shudder. It's okay, you can get one, but never at the price of the simplicity that's in Christ. And I'm very much aware that religion and the reality of the Holy Ghost are very close. Those Pharisees are still in hell. What did we do? They still haven't figured it out. We said all the right things, but your heart wasn't there. You weren't pursuing God. You're pursuing yourself. And so the more we get to know him, the more we become like him. This has to be a pursuit. Everybody say relentless pursuit. Relentless pursuit. I'm going to close. And that I may, in the same way, come to know the power outflowing for his resurrection, which it exerts over believers. That I may show, share his sufferings as to be continually transformed in spirit 
into his likeness, even to his death. In the hope that if possible, I may attain to the spiritual and moral resurrection that lifts me out from among the dead, even while in the body. He said, you know what, I want to tap into the power of this resurrection to the point that my own spirit gets energized and lifted up where my body is complete subjection to me. The Bible says that we have the possibility to be out of the fruit of the spirit out of Galatians 5.22 to be filled with love, filled with joy, filled with peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, kindness, self-control. That's in us. Because that's who Jesus is. He says, that can come right out of you as you pursue me. Pursue me. Pursue me. I love what Chris said again. Chris, you had quite a lot of good sermons today in one. <laughs> she said, you know, I went to the Great Commission because I was asked to do. And the more I went, I had things bubble up out of me. Like strife with people and because people are weird. When you go on a mission trip and you're sharing bathrooms, <laughs> you'll find out how sanctified you are. When you're on a mission trip and you're on there early and some guy's dragging in late, you know how sanctified you are. When you're on a mission trip and you're doing the work and they're just not toting the wagon, you'll find out how sanctified you are. I promise you, you'll be tested. But you know what? She got tested once, tested twice, tested three times. What happens is you put yourself on that turnstile of the, of the maker's hand and he changes you as you do the work. And the fire of God and the work of God come together to make you a different person. I tell people, you need to put yourself in harm's way all the time. Make yourself do things that are uncomfortable. Make yourself go a place where you wouldn't normally go. Make yourself testify. Never turn me down when I say, I need you to testify. Now, pastor, I don't, I'm not testifying kind. Well, you need a little more Jesus in you because it's really about Jesus getting the glory for what he did in you. And you should jump and say, yeah, I want to be used by Jesus. I want to give him glory. And so we are growing. God wants us to grow, but we grow. Listen, the key, Paul puts it this way. It's all about wanting to know him. It's the pursuit of him. That's the key. It's the pursuit of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ that you pursue him. A relentless pursuit, like it's lifelong. You can never back off. You can never back down. You never retire. And then it goes on to say, that if possible, I may attain the spiritual right. I already covered that. Now he goes on to say this, and I'll end with this. I'm trying to end. Not that I've now attained this ideal, already made perfect, but I press on to lay hold of to grasp and make my own that for which Christ, the Messiah, has laid hold of me and made me his own. I do not consider, brethren, I've captured and made it my own yet. But one thing I do, it is my one aspiration, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the supreme and heavenly prize to which God in Christ Jesus is calling us upward. There is a pressing. Can you hear it in his language? I am pressing to know him. I want to know him. I want to know him. I want to know him. And the more you press into to know him, he'll come to you. But it has to be a desire in you. And it translates in your prayer life. It translates in your time with God. It translates in how you come and serve in the church and how you worship God and how you enter in and how you press in. and how. Listen to me. All these things are measures that come from out of your heart. And we don't condemn people who do or do not come. I don't look at that. I just, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to go for it. Anyone wants to join us, fine. If you don't want to come, we'll still love you. See you once a month. See you every other month. You know, we call our list every now and again. And we went through those that come once a year. I said, let's call those. So we called this one person. We got a call. Hey, I heard I was taken off a list. Well, 
We thought maybe you're going someplace else. It's once a year. I'm still a member. Put my name back on there. I said, okay. See you next Christmas Eve. Praise God. <laughs> but what happens is our passions got less and less in the house of God in America. We are just not that much desiring because we already know. We checked the box, saved. I'll close with that. There's so much I could go on to it. There's so much. I just got to close because I just get tied into it. But Paul goes on to say, what I've just given you is the lifestyle of a mature believer following Jesus. He said, if this is not your lifestyle, he doesn't knock you. He says, you got some growing up to do. But I'm praying that you'll get over there because he said, this is the way, this is what life's about. So if you know that, let me just say this to you. The enemy will do whatever he can to separate you from your goal. He really will. He will do whatever he can. With your busyness, with whatever he can, other people, he will make sure that you're not into the presence of God and to following him with everything you have. The Satan is all about getting you separated. But the Holy Spirit's all about getting you connected. But there's levels of connection. And revival is always about eliminating the barriers that keep us from the very presence of God. And I promise you, folks, it takes the Holy Ghost moving in the Spirit in your life to peel back the junk. Amen. And some of us, I don't want to, I'm not looking at anybody. But some of us, we deal with demonic strongholds. Absolutely. Demons get involved. And they will lock on your mind and they will get you to calculate religiously and give you reasons why you shouldn't be involved and how you can back off. And I'm telling you, you've got to understand this. You've got to examine yourself. Paul, David said, search me, O God, know my heart. Try me, know my thoughts. See if there's any, any wicked way in me. We've got to be, examine ourselves. God. I don't want anything flaky in my life. If it's flaky, you know, you need to be repenting. When was the last time you came to the altar to repent? Well, I don't repent. I'm already saved. No. There are things in your life he points out. We're not revivalists. The people are repenting of things because God shows you things. If you're examining yourself, he will show you. That attitude needs to get out. That way of thinking, you need to crucify that. You need to repent. And if we don't, another layer goes around our heart. Another layer of veil of blindness. And then pretty soon, we justify ourselves. We turn into dead wood. The church is full of dead wood. But we've got to get radical. Say, God, let the fire burn out everything that's dead in my life. Every ounce of pride, every ounce of religion, every ounce of know it allism, every ounce where I, I got this, I got, I don't, I don't, I, I, no, 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 no. You should stay hungry. I don't care whoever teaches here. I have a lot of people teach this here. I take notes. I want to learn. I don't care if a 12 year old got there. What does he know? Maybe something God could show you that you don't even know yet through that 12 year old. Be very careful. So you're going to say, God, God, I want to be like a Paul. I want to know Christ. I want to have that. I want to, I want to peel off everything that keeps me back from going for God, for learning about Jesus in a deeper and a fuller way that I might know him. It needs to be a cry in our heart. I want to know you, Jesus. We've tasted heaven tonight. It's God's come along. It's his calling. There's a power. There's a fire. There's the anointing. You need to get into it. I want to give you more. I want to undo works of hell. I want to heal your body. I want to heal your spirit and soul. I want to heal you. I want to set you free. But it comes by pressing into Him. It's Him. 
I tell you, everything must be about more of Him. If you, the bottom line, the motive for your life must be, I need more of Him. That's it. Well, I already got Him. No, He needs to get hold of you, though. You have Christ in you, the hope of glory, but does He, does he have you? This is this, it's a constant refrain. It has to be flowing out of you. It's got to be flowing out of you. So when we say have revival, oh, good, I'm having revival because I need it. If your refrain is, well, I don't need that. I already got God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hasaboro nasekiela kodoza. Kimani. I didn't see you. That's not. That's Jessica. I get a little closer. I need. Anthony, come here. God's doing a work in you. You're hungry. Amen? He's going to make you more hungry, dear Anthony. In the name of Jesus. Now raise your hand. I pray right now, every ounce of bondage that Satan has put upon your life in Jesus' name, I break it with the fire of God on your life. Break it. I break it. The healing virtue of Jesus heals your heart. Heal his mind, Jesus. Touch his mind. Set his mind free. Set his mind free. In Jesus' name. Sabaroso ki ala kadasa. Otolo marababaya. Shana mama rodosi ki ala baba. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Barodosi ki ala baba radaya. Hajeli baroso kudoso kudori ala kedaya. Hajeli baroso kudoso ki ala kedari ala kedaya. Ada bara baba sakedari ala kidi olo kudoso kudoso kidi ala kedari ala kedaya. Hajala baroso kidi ala baba radaya. Praise you Jesus. Sikara babo siki ala keda. Hajala barono siki olo kudoso kudori ala kedaya. Hajala baroso kidi ala kedaya. Ajala bara baba sakadari ala kiri olu kudu sakadoya. Oto la bara na mama saki ala kada sakadaya. Oza baro siki za bara na siki olu kudu ya. Ajala bara di kadari ala kadaya. Ajala baro siki di ala kadaya. Here, come here. Come here. I tell you this, Chuck. The hand of God's on you. He's peeling back the layers. Layer after layer is peeling off. You're on the pottery wheel. You're on the wheel of the potter. God is remaking you from the inside out. He's changing. I feel the presence of God on you. Being changed from glory to glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. It's not going to be by might, no by power. It's going to be by my Spirit, says the Lord. As you cry out to me, I'll do the work in you. Work of grace that goes beyond what you could do in your strength. But the work of grace is my power released to you on all your behalf. So receive that which I give. Receive a fresh oil of anointing. Receive my touch. Deeper, deeper. More and more. Change into another man by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says a broken and contrite heart he will not despise. He touches you with his fire. He touches you. Heal his part, God. Heal his part. I speak freedom to your soul. Every work of hell, every stronghold, I break it. I break the strongholds off your life. 
Come down in Jesus' name. God's holy fire burns out that which needs to go. Fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. The supernatural work of the Holy Ghost. A supernatural work of the Holy Ghost. Jessica, come here. I was just going by. If I feel the Lord prompt me, I don't go by what you say or look. Sometimes I pick the most unlikely people. His hands on you. Wow. There's great things in store. You're on track. Yeah. Sanamoro Disikia. Harma, great leader for heaven. Watch. That fire is going to build and grow and grow and grow and grow. You're going to be given boldness with people. You're going to be given great confidence in your who you are, and you're going to stand very strong and tall. He's adding to you daily. You see the change. Lord, do the work in me. I just thank you. Let the fire build. Hunger for you, Father. A hunger for the Word. A hunger for the Holy Ghost. A hunger to walk the royal way, the way of love. A hunger. In Jesus' name. That you shut down every voice that's contrary to the Word. You speak what he says. You follow what he says. Shotarai. I feel the fire of God on you. And he comes to do a work in you. That work of assurance and the fire is coming greater and greater and greater and greater and greater. Jack, is that right? Come up here. The lady in red. Baranyata Kuradikiya. Jana Marodoya. I just said the Lord drew you here to this house. The Lord's preparing you and equipping you. I hear the Lord says He's going to cut off some things that some baggage needs to go. Some things that held on to you. I don't know all about it, but some things that have people have hurt you and even come against you. Because people get jealous of your heart with God. The Lord says that's going to come off and you're going to have a fresh wind beneath your wings. You're going to go for him like you've never gone before. And the Lord's going to clearly show you your next steps because he's got some great steps for you. You understand that? It's going to be great. So shake off. Like shake off all that past in Jesus' name. Let the fire come on your life. Fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Sisters. Uh-huh. Trying to be coy. Hallelujah. All I know is your friends and a sister. That's all I know about you. Is that okay? All right? Yes. All right. Now listen. I'll just close with this for you. You got a lot of questions. Questions sometimes you ask God. Oh God about this and when, it, when is this happening so you just kind of put it under but I feel like God's want to tell you that if you ask him he's going to give you answers he's got direction for your life amen and he's going to give you what you need to fulfill the call he's put on you on me oh yeah you 
And uh, you're not in the shadow of anybody, including your sister. You're not in the shadow of anybody. God has got his hand on you, he says. And he's got something unique for you. And he loves you. Watch what he does. It's going to be unveiled this month at 20. Raise your hands. He comes on you right now. The power of God comes on your life. The Spirit of God. Lord, you just touch her. Let that fire undo everything that needs to go. Let there be a release of freedom. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Feel that? It's God's spirit. Just yield it. He wants to do a work in you. More. Oh, I feel it. Shana Mamasa. Break every evil word spoken over you. I break every word of curse. I break it. And I release the blessing of God on you. You're blessed. You're blessed. Blessed. And you're going to go for God. You are going to go for God. I'll be watching. just want to open up the altars for people. You're here tonight and you say, I want the presence of God in my life. I want, I have a hunger for God. I tell you, the presence of God is something you got to want. You got a hunger. You say, God, I want you. I want the anointing. I want your presence. I don't want to stay where I am. And if this in fact really is the last, if this is the last revival meeting, yeah, no, it may not be. We do a Christmas Eve revival meeting just before Christmas Eve. I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Honey, could you come up? Yeah. Yeah. Send the fire, send the rain. Send the fire, send the rain. God is dope. What is that? I need to pray for you. That's good. I was ready to cast that off his shirt. Did you see that, Pastor Willie? It's good. Okay. I wonder what else they're going to come up with. God is dope. Another day, Nancy. You two are coming into your own in 21. Ministry grips. It's a ministry. The Lord says it's a ministry gift you focus on. You do many things. That's the ministry gift. You step into it and stretch it. You're going to flow this in this. It's going to be a Holy Ghost acceleration. You'll be amazed. He's going to do it for both of you. Amen? Come up here a minute. Ron Moore is a walking miracle. 
when he first came to church, he sat over here and sat sideways. <laughs> Looked out the window. Didn't want to be here. Didn't like me. I could feel it. But the more I preached, the Holy Ghost worked with him. He slowly turned around, started to face me. <laughs> and then after a while, he began to kind of like me. That's what I'm praying for you. <laughs> I don't want to say it again. A divine calling, a divine gift of God. There'll be a shift of gears. You're going to step into the new flow of the anointing. The anointing shall grow. I hear the word teacher. You'll teach. You'll teach. You'll give the word. The power of heaven shall come through the word. The anointing shall increase on your life. And fresh fire shall fall on you. 2021. Get watch what God does in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Uh, Nikki and Bonnie, you need to come up here. Uh, you should. Did you sign a little piece of paper that says, I agree that if I sit in a chair that pastor could call on me and give me a word. <laughs> Come up here. We love you guys. Hallelujah. Shana Mama Sakaya. Shita Karata Kia Tataya. Ha 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 ha. Shana Kiana. You know, I get for you the word. I say, I keep hearing it again. The Lord's just begun what he's purposed for you it looks like he's just begun but what he's got is something more than you can imagine with your mind right now but you're going to step over you are into the anointing of the spirit in a dynamic way amen you're a great blessing the body of Christ there's no one quite like Bonnie <laughs> oh God oh Jesus let the fire let the fire burn in my sister I feel the fire on me now let the fire burn this month Lord let it burn this month let it be a new walk in Jesus Burn in her, Jesus. Fire! Burn in her. Now, Nikki, you're straight and true. You, you're faithful. God's going to honor you. I just hear this. The Lord's going to continue to honor you. You say, Lord, I don't know. People see what I do. Oh, yes, God sees. He's going to elevate what you're doing. I'm telling you. Baranasi kiolo kodosu kodoya. That's funny. I just heard him say something. I don't want to say it publicly. It's good, though. It's about your future. It's about your job. That's interesting, Lord. That's interesting. So, Lord, I pray it over her. Let the fire increase. Fresh oil. In Jesus' name. So, you ready? Send the fire. Send your fire. Send, Send your rain. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Holy oil in Jesus' name. Loose the wind that brings heaven's change. Send your fire. Send the oil, the wind, and the rain. Send your fire. Send the fire. Jesus, send it. Send it tonight. Send your rain. Send the rain, oh God. Holy oil. Holy oil in Jesus' name. Loose 
Touch people that want to be touched. You can you can be sitting in your seat and be touched. You say, but I want to press into Jesus. I want to know him like Paul knew him. I want my heart set of plays. I want to press into God. I want my heart hungry for God. I want my heart filled with a passion for the things of the Spirit. That's what really Paul wanted us to have. That's what God wanted us, wants us to have. That anointing of the Holy Ghost can do a work on the inside. I know He's done it to me. The more I submit myself and yield myself to the presence of God, the more He burns things out of my life and burns into me what I need to have. Everyone's different, but God works in us uniquely to free us, to heal us, and set us in a place where we are truly on fire for Him. So that's you. I got brother Kevin's gonna help me. Just uh, you can come in whatever you want to come. Just take it. Come in. Come in, in waves. Just come up to the fable blue line. We'll pray for you.
I believe for that power to go into you. I believe that anointing with you, my dear brother. In the mighty name of Jesus. That same fire. That fire. That fire. I speak it over your body. I speak it over your life. Fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. You're going to run with a new fire. You're going to be burning for God. Fire. Fire. Dallas, get ready. You're going to go for God. Are you going to stand tall? Fire! Every answer is coming. Breakthrough for your life. I call in the job. I call in the car. I call in every need you have. In Jesus' name, angels go, cause to come. And that anointing on your life breaks every work of hell. Fire!
He has got greater things for you, my sister. 
that go beyond what you could even think. And that fire shall burn in you the greater measure and bring healing and bring deliverance and safety. I just hear the Lord say his love, he pours into you now. It's in you, but it's going to be like releasing of the love of God. How loved you are. Fight, how loved you are. How loved you are. We break it off David. We break it. The blinders, we break it. In Jesus' name. And we release fire on your life. That you are a woman of God and you fulfill the call of God. Shh. More fire. Fill the purpose of God in your life a spokesman for your generation to release the word of God that the fire of heaven fire burn in her fire there's more there's more another level another level another anointing a fresh fire it's flowing from heaven's throne it flows now fire from glory of God. Hallelujah. Here the Lord say, you don't see nothing yet what I'm going to do through you. You've done this, you've done that, you see me do this, and you see me do that. But the Lord says it's going to pale what I'm going to use you through. Because you don't even understand fully what He's called you. There is great fields of harvest He's going to use you in. And it's going to be, this is preparation for what I've called you. That's what this is, says the Lord. So let the fire be upon my sister. Burn in her, Lord. Let the wind of God be upon her life. Fire, fire, fire. Hosa, Hosheni Baba Radaya. Hotolo Baraba Baba. Hosa Maria La Baba Ranasa Daya. Puranasa Kadaya. I just hear more. You can receive more. There's more, there's greater. An abundance. An abundance. The fire of heaven. The fire of heaven. Fall on him, Lord. The fire. The fire. The fire. That oil of heaven. Saturate him. Burn in him, Lord. The anointing of God. You're going to see it come. It's being burned off. It's being burned out. It's the fire of heaven. Sanctifying fire of God. Everything's going to be burned out. It comes out in Jesus' name. Hosta Maradaya. Be a fresh anointing to flow with God. Even in your ministry, a fresh anointing. Even on your job, a fresh anointing. A freshness. I feel the power of God on you. I feel it's on you. Change Jesus. Soba Sakiana Masa. It's a fire heaven. Oh Jesus, we love you. Oh Jesus, we praise you. Oh Jesus, we magnify you. Vicky Barnosiki, the Baranasiada, Ajila Marosiki. The fire of heaven falls on you. The fire of heaven fills you. Releases you for his glory. It's a change in the presence of God. Fire! In Jesus' name. God's so good. Uh, it's whatever they want. It's whatever you want. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Let's just thank the Lord. Let's just, before they come up. Let's just sing that one more time since they're already send the fire. Let me just, I love that. Hallelujah. One more time, send the fire. Send your fire. Send your fire, Jesus. Send your rain. Ask God to pour it upon you, even as you sit out there. Holy Let him anoint you afresh. Jesus. 
Yes, Jesus. Loose the wind that brings heaven's change. Send your fire, send the oil, the wind and the rain. Oh, send your fire. Send your fire. Send your rain. Pour the oil. Pour the oil. Thanking you, Father, for all that you've done tonight. Thank you for touching hearts and changing lives. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Thank you for undoing every work of hell off of people's lives. Thank you for setting every captive free. I feel God's just doing the work still. I mean, He's working in people's hearts and lives. I just feel Him so strong. He's been so strong. The precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. going to keep flowing. If you got to go, we got to go. It's like a slip slide away type meeting if you have to go. But I just want to I'll pray for I'll pray for some of these that want to be prayed for. But I want to have music though. Don't 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 stop the music. God's going to do miracles in your son. He's going to do a miracle. He's going to break this thing off him. That deception is being broken in Jesus' name. And of your whole household, deception is broken. In the name of Jesus, the reality of God's love is coming through. It's going to undo every work of hell. Give the Lord time. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stephen, come on now. Do you have a job yet? You guys working that house still? That's all right, God's gonna listen. Yeah, let the Lord lead you. I just feel this. Yeah, it's a new path, not the traditional path, a new path God has. He has the blessings of heaven on that path. There's a new path. Step out in faith, step out, you're hearing God. I hear the Lord say you're going to get flexibility of time. That's where you need to be. Flexibility of time. And that's going to be part of what God has for you for ministry and for the application of what God gave you and for your heritage in Guyana and other ministries as well. Now watch this. Now Lord, we come in agreement that the, by the anointing of God, an open heaven is on my brother and he knows clearly the next steps and he's stepping in a new place of provision for his house. That's what we come in agreement for. In Jesus' name. So angels, be, be loose. We loose you. Cause it to come about. Angels of God, cause it to come about. You can receive an anointing to get the revelation from God. And all, and I, I just hear this. Witty inventions, supernatural designs, methodology is coming right now by the Holy Ghost. Fire! Do it, Lord. Miracle power. Miracle power. Holy Ghost, miracle, power. Jesus, mighty name. Jesus, mighty, mighty name. Hatalama masakia la babara sakaya. Now let me just say something about the Holy Ghost and the anointing. The more you respect the anointing of the Holy Ghost, understand that what God can do for you and through you that no man can do. He can set you free of bondages. He can heal hearts that are broken. He'll cause even your personality to shift in the way of the spirit instead of the way of the flesh. God, when we yield to him, he does things in you that you cannot figure with your head. But you'll see it work out as you go down the line. All of a sudden things are, I used to get fearful. I don't get fearful. I used to get sad. I stay in joy. I used to be bound, but I just, feel, I just know I'm free. And it's like the Holy Ghost does it that you cannot... It's like indefinable. That's why it has to be a work of faith. You come hungry for God. 
And every time he touches you, something, let me tell you what, we live in the touch of God. I cannot imagine running a church without the anointing and having the touch of God. Our staff are connected, but we flow in the Holy Ghost. If you get out of the Holy Ghost, all kinds of snarky things happen. The flesh rears its ugly head, the devils come with it and bring division and bring all kinds of mess. But I tell you what, the more you get under the anointing, the more your home will be at peace. The more you get under the anointing, I tell you what, it's like it gets easier. Amen. There's like a divine flow. It's not such a struggle. It's in the presence of God. And really, as we learn this thing, we keep pressing into Jesus. He keeps downloading into us. But we've got to press until we get into his presence. It's got to be something more than just rote. Because rote leads into ruts. And a rut. He told the children of Israel, this, uh, Deuteronomy 1, they got in a rut about going around the mountain. You can just get complacent. You just get comfortable in the place. They're going around and around the mountain. Round and around the same dumb mountain. The whole children of Israel. Can you imagine just doing a circle? And the Lord spoke and said, you've been around this mountain long enough. Some of you have been around the mountain. Around the mountain. Same scenery. Same people. Same scenario. Same job. Same problems. Round and round. You know what that's called? Boring, first of all. But, uh, but also, it's called, we, we, we accept. What happens is we just fall into the rut of accepting the way it is. When that's, that's not where you should be. You should not know, I'm getting out of this. I'm not going around this dumb mountain anymore. I'm going to cut a track towards God. We've got to get more radical in these last days. You've got to press in and say, I'm not living. I don't want the normal Christian life. I want a radical. Does that make sense? On, Paul was a radical. He pursued the heart of God. That's what God wants us to do. Pursue Him. Pursue Him. Pursue Him. Pursue Him. In your own time, pursue Him. I can't imagine running a church without a move of God. I can't, I can't even imagine. I'd leave. I want the move of God. You're going to see God move on you. Tonight, He messed with you in a good way. I can't wait to hear the rest of the story. Yeah, you can't either, can you? Yeah, they agreed. Did you receive it? Close. She said, I want the Holy Ghost. She got it. The Holy Ghost. What's your name, sister? Joanne. Joanne? Jesus baptized you. Joanne, the friend next to you, her name is Bonnie Tilly. Tilly. I said Tilly. And that's her daughter, Nikki. What's, what's, what's your name? Karen? Tara. Oh, we got another Tara. Tara, Tara Wood, is it? Hallelujah. Let me pray for my worship team. Lord, they're wonderful tonight. Yeah, play the music up above. Play that thing that goes through the special. Nikki, miracles. Miracles. Nikki, miracles. Miracles. Dr. Johnny, miracles. Miracle anointing. Miracle favor. Miracles. I'm telling you, Nikki, I speak it on you. Miracles. I hear this door opening miracles. That anointing of the Holy Ghost expands your belief system. Miracles. The fire of heaven. Fire. 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 Whoa, Shola. The gift of preaching is going to rise up bigger and bigger. I speak it to you. The gift of preaching is going to come loose in you. Fire! In Jesus' name. Now listen, you're going to step into songs of the Lord. You're going to step into supernatural singing. You got that? 
because you come to the edge, I watch you get there and you cross back. I see what you're right there. You're going to step into it. It's going to bring the fire down the house. Now listen, you got to be yielded. You got to want him. 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 Fire! Fire! Let it be a burning in her. In Jesus' name. I Lord say, I hear the desires of your heart. A desire is for the things of the Spirit. A desire for more. A desire to touch heaven. I tell you, I love how the Lord said, the anointing is going to flow. It's going to come to you in a greater and greater measure, like wave upon wave. You step over into that other realm in worship. It's going to start happening. Songs of the Lord. I hear songs of the Lord. Sanya la Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. Fresh oil. Fresh fire. 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 Ajela Mamaya. Adi ala kadari ala kadori ala kidiolo kadori ala kadaya. Shiki yolo kadori ala kidiolo kadoya. Wasamara dadi ala kiala babarana. I hear the word faithful. A faithful man who can find. The Lord's found you. God's going to reward you. I hear this. Your influence will go around the world. God's opening up doors. You will go to nations. Divine supply, divine teams, in Jesus' name, be by the Holy Ghost. Fire! Let it burn in him. It's that anointing. It's that anointing. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> ah, uh, take one step up, my brother Jonathan. You're a big man. Ah, <laughs> Now you're carrying some stuff. Tonight you shake it off. Baramama Sakia. Ajela Baba Sakadaya. Bosanaka Yala Kada Zakia Lokodo Sakia. I hear the word divine supply in Jesus' name. A divine supply in Jesus' name. Oshola Maria Tiki Tikorodaya. Lord, let a fresh fire be on my brother. The fresh anointing beyond him. Burn in him. Burn. Burn like almighty fire. Fire. Show back. With Zakada Zekio. As the Baro Zeki Zakada. As she the Barra Zakada. Fire. Touch him, Jesus. God is dope. I'm processing this. Raise your hands up in the air. <laughs> oh, Jesus, touch my brother with fire. Right through that sign in Jesus' name. Show him, God, that you're good to him with fire. Fire! God is, is guess he's Atabaranasa. You know what, Eduardo? My brother, I've known you for years. Your faithfulness is exemplary. <laughs> Eduardo! Eduardo! This is for you. Fogo. <laughs> Fogo. Fogo, Fogo, Fogo. Fogo, 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 Fogo. Fogo. Fire! 
Fogo. Fuego. Fogo. Fogo, 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 fogo. Fogo, 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 fogo. It's a fogo man. Fogo. Hashalama, sialama, masatai. Asama, mama, maseki, olo soy. Zikara, baza. Ozamarise. Fogo. It works. Fogo. Fogo, fogo. God is dope. Gaba basaka. Hit him, Jesus. Shota ba 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 ba. Yeah! Oh! Shanai! Oh! Nanai! Ota lama masata. Ota loma masikio. Ata barana sata. Ata lama marasa kataya. Change is coming. Get ready. 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 You know, the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. You know, this brother left a big position in a church to come here and, quote, do nothing, unquote. <laughs> but, but, but God, but God has plans. No, really, he has plans. I tell you, brother, God's got plans. Watch what God does. Watch what God does. Watch what God does. <laughs> Peru is going to see you. That's going to be powerful. Let me just say this. The anointing of God is on you guys. He's on you. You're going to bring it with you even to the jungle. They're going to the jungle. <laughs> These are Holy Ghost, Gospel, Jungle, Bible toters. And the anointing is going to hit those Indian, the, the American Indian. It's going to hit them. You're going to watch God touch them. They have no preconceived ideas. They have nothing else to go by. They don't have any television. So it's just the Holy Ghost. But he's going to use you both. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to come back with stories. And you're going to come back with, with contacts. What you're going to come back with? Oh, my goodness, Pastor. There's this, this, and this, and this. We need to send Jennifer Cruz. I feel that you know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a roll. Watch what happens. I'm so excited. When do you leave? Next time they go to Peru. They're going to the jungles of Peru in a canoe. Just us two in a canoe. But God will see you through. It's going to be okay. When I get around him, the rap comes on me in a bad way. It's called a bad rap. In Jesus wonderful. In Jesus wonderful. He's doing such a work in people's lives. Christian, you're such a great flow. It was such a great flow. And uh, everybody floats so powerfully up there. Wow. This has been amazing. It's been amazing. Give God the glory tonight. Father, for the heavens that are open tonight, we give you glory. We're nothing, but you're everything. You're everything, Jesus. We really don't want to just be 
verbalizing this. We want to really press into you. Lord, we believe you've been anointed with fresh oil that you put a fire in our belly to press into the things of God. That we're going to run to you. We want to know you, Jesus, intimately. We want to lay hold on that which you've laid hold on us. We want to know you. We want to lay hold of your love, of your anointing, of your grace. We've tasted heaven tonight. It's been wonderful. Thank you for your fire. Thank you for your mighty presence. Thank you for the change you're doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord, you're transforming us from glory to glory. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Any wonderful? Jesus is absolutely wonderful. We're fascinated with his person, with his majesty, with his love, with his kindness, with his goodness. He is such a wonderful Savior. We give our lives to you, Jesus. They don't only belong to us, they belong to you. Use our lives for your glory. Let us pour out your love and life to others that have never known of your love. From city to city, from nation to nation, use us. Use us for your glory. In Jesus' name. Let's keep playing the music.